They've got nothing better to do and they don't belong in the gym. This is the most ridiculous, really counterintuitive myth I have ever heard. This literally couldn't be further from the truth. I want to talk about something I personally struggled with for years and that is gym fears. Because you know that feeling of anxiety and self-doubt that creeps in every time you think about stepping foot into the gym. Whether you're new or relatively experienced, a lot more people get gym anxiety than you think. I remember the first time I walked into a gym and I was so intimidated by all the equipment I didn't know and all the fit people around me. And I mean, in shape, not attractive. I felt like everyone was watching me and judging me, but I overcame those fears and I'm here today to tell you how to do the same. Today's video is all about conquering your gym fears. So in this video, we'll be covering the common fears about the gym, practical tips to overcome them, the social influence and how that impacts the gym environment, and debunking gym myths that may be restricting you from entering the gym. Many people have fears about going to the gym. Some common ones include fear of judgment, feeling like everyone is watching or judging you, a lack of confidence in your abilities, or simply not knowing how to use the equipment properly. These fears can be so overwhelming that they prevent you from even stepping foot in a gym. Look, you're not alone. Almost everyone has experienced these fears at some point. Studies even show that up to 50% of people feel intimidated by the gym environment. So let's talk about how to overcome these fears. Here are some practical tips that work for me and many others. First, do some research on gyms in your area. Look for reviews, check their website, and even visit the gym beforehand if possible. Knowing what to expect can alleviate a lot of anxiety. Start small. You don't have to dive into an extremely intense workout straight away. Start with some simple weight exercises or even some cardio machines that you might be familiar with. This will help you get warm, loosen up and build your confidence in the gym. Don't hesitate to bring a buddy to the gym. Yeah, they might be stronger than you to begin with, but that's fine. That makes sense because they've been training longer than you have. Also, don't hesitate to be friendly with the gym staff or even hire a personal trainer. There's no harming understanding and learning about your environment and becoming more confident in it. Create a routine. Having a set routine can make the gym feel less daunting. Plan your workouts ahead of time so you know exactly what you're going to do when you get there. Remember, everyone's doing their own thing. So no one's looking at you, no one's judging you. Everyone's here for the same reason. All right, so let's move on to gym myths debunked. So in this segment, we're gonna be covering common myths about the gym and fitness that might be holding you back. So the first and extremely common one is everyone is judging me. The truth is, most people are either so focused on their own workouts that they hardly notice anyone else around them, or they're so worried about everyone else judging them that they aren't judging anyone else. So I guarantee you, if there's people in the gym that are judging you, it's either A, because they're insecure, or B, because they've got nothing better to do and they don't belong in the gym. So please remember, if you think everyone is judging you in the gym, again, they're either so focused on their own workout that they're not even looking at you, or they're so worried about everyone else judging them that they don't have time to judge people. So. That is the first myth debunked. Remember, everyone started somewhere and the gym is a place for self-improvement, not judgment. So if you're the person judging people, you gotta ask yourself why, because everyone else is in the gym for the same reason as you, to improve themselves. So next myth is I need to be fit to actually go to the gym. And this is the most ridiculous, really counterintuitive myth I have ever heard. This literally couldn't be further from the truth. The gym is a place for all fitness levels. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned athlete, there's a place for you in the gym. When I first started, I could barely curl the four kilo dumbbells, but consistent effort paid off, and now I'm up to the 20 kilo dumbbells. So it just takes time. So unless you're some genetic god and you've got great fitness already, the chances are, the first time you step foot in the gym, you won't be as athletic or as healthy as you want to be. But please remember, that is where everyone starts. Don't let the fear of starting small stop you from beginning your fitness journey. So the next myth is that lifting weights will make me bulky, especially for women. This is a massive concern that whenever I speak to women and why they don't want to go to the gym, chances are they say that's because they don't want to get bulky. And I'm not being funny. I've been training for three years. Yes, I know I'm not skinny, but I'm far from bulky. So if I don't get bulky within three years of super hard training, I don't think you've got to worry. Without being anecdotal, strength training is really beneficial for everyone. It helps you build lean muscle, increases your metabolism, and just improves overall health. And bulking up requires specific training plans and diets. So for most people, if you just eat what you already do, weightlifting or using resistance training as a way to exercise will just help you stay fit. And also help you get a bit stronger, which can't be a bad thing. Focus on a balanced training routine that includes both cardio and strength training for optimal results. Right, so the next myth is I need to spend hours a day in the gym to see results. And the truth is, effective workouts can be done in a short period of time. For example, my workouts never really take much more than an hour. Sometimes they can if I'm being slow and lazy, but generally an hour is about where I finish. But also the way you program your workouts and exercises throughout the session means you can make your session as long or as short as you want. If you want your session to be two hours because you love it in the gym and you just want to keep moving, 
you can make it two hours. If you want your session to be half an hour, you can make it half an hour. And a great example of short training sessions that are super effective is high intensity interval training or HIIT training. So the general rule of thumb is that quality over quantity is key because you'll be a lot better off doing four exercises that are all really, really effective, really challenging for you than doing eight exercises that are just not challenging, not effective, and are just a bit boring. Even a 30 minute workout, if done efficiently, can yield significant results. The key is consistency and making every minute count. Now I want to introduce you to someone you might have heard of and is making a massive effort into making gyms a better place for everyone, Joey Swole. Joey is a fitness influencer and bodybuilder who actively fights against bullying and intimidation in the gym. And his message is all about creating a supportive environment where everyone feels welcome. And Joey doesn't have a specific agenda. All the videos that he stitches and creates are just based on what he thinks is the right thing to do in the situation. Joey emphasizes the importance of respecting others in the gym and offers practical advice for those who feel intimidated. He encourages people to focus on their own journey and not to be discouraged by others. Joey's work has inspired many to overcome their gym fears and pursue their fitness goals confidently. However, Joey has also been involved in some controversy on TikTok. He's been calling out individuals who film others in the gym without their consent, highlighting issues of privacy and respect. Whilst many support his stance and methods on promoting positive gym culture, many critics say his methods are overly confrontational and can be misinterpreted. This controversy has sparked a lot of debate online, but it also emphasizes the importance of creating a supportive and respectful space in the gym. So as we've seen, overcoming gym fears is possible with the right mindset and approach. So let's recap the strategies. You should begin by researching a gym, start with small steps, seek support from buddies and PTs in the gym, create a routine and focus on yourself. Pushing past these fears not only benefits your physical health, but also supports your mental well-being. All right, and that is all. If you like this video, check out my latest one that is how to do your first pull-up in just a month. It goes through the techniques, the progressions, and the muscles used, and how to improve them all, which will ultimately take you to doing your first pull-up in just a month, or improving your pull-ups overall. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon so you don't miss a banger, and smash the thumbs up to show me you like the video. That's all from me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.